Special thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Stay tuned and hear more about what they've got to offer at the end of the video. T-Rex has been nothing short of controversial for many years, being the centre of much debate on whether it's a scavenger, how fast it could run, whether it could roar, and now, whether it was feathered. We've seen mock-ups with it being fully feathered like a bird, and some with light filaments, and some completely featherless. But which is it? Did the T-Rex really have feathers? There's been a lot of heated debates recently regarding the T-Rex and whether it had feathers, but let's take a look at feathers on dinosaurs. We know certain dinosaurs have feathers thanks to the outlines on the remains of certain dinosaur species, which tells us what kind of feathers they had, and how much of it they had. Velociraptor is covered in feathers, with the wings being most likely used for steering at extreme speeds. There are some kinds of feathers that will take the form of fur, similarly to what's found on chicks. This is used for insulation, whilst other kinds of feathers can actually be used for cooling large creatures down, which is important to take note of for later on in this video. Is this enough evidence to say T-Rex had feathers? Absolutely not. Just because many dinosaurs had feathers doesn't mean all of them did. A famous hadrosaur mummy was found to have just scales, for example. As for the T-Rex, let's take a look at the T-Rex itself before we come to a conclusion. As far as we know, this beast grew to a length of 40 feet and raised up to a height of 20 feet, about the size of a standard bus. This is from a recent discovery uncovering what we now know to be the largest T-Rex specimen ever uncovered, known as Scotty. Contrary to its name, Scotty is not a male, she's female. The real reason she's called Scotty is because the lead scientist purchased an expensive bottle of scotch whiskey to celebrate the findings. <laughs> My kind of scientists. This discovery told us a lot about the T-Rex, including what it would have looked like. They even found out the T-Rex may have been heavier than expected, with one leg bone weighing in at around 90 kilograms. Analyzing her dong even told scientists that Scotty had a taste for herbivores like Stegosaurus and Triceratops. This monster had a bite force of approximately 8,000 pounds, that's around 3.6 tons. In comparison, a human can bite at around 200 pounds of pressure. Scotty was 28 years old when she died, older than any other T-Rex specimen, yes, even Sue, the world's largest T-Rex prior to Scotty's uncovering. Many argue that a dinosaur of that size would not need feathers, stating that feathers would overheat such a large creature. But think of all the birds with black feathers that live in extreme environments. Black feathers actually have cooling properties, as all the heat collects on the surface and the lightest breeze can blow it away, meaning this lightest bit of wind will cool the creature down, though there are several different types of feathers, all having different properties. Eutyranus, a smaller member of the Tyrannosaurid family, relatives to the T-Rex, was found to indeed have feathers. So there's a lot of evidence pointing toward the T-Rex having feathers, though we do actually have skin impressions of the Tyrannosaurus Rex, found at the bottom of the tail, the hips, along the ribcage, and on the neck. And they show scales, not feathers, which means at least in these areas, it was featherless. So what we know is that the ancestors to T-Rex had feathers, but in some areas of preserved Tyrannosaurus skin, it didn't have them. So what we can conclude is that the T-Rex, as a baby, had feathers that resembled fur for insulation purposes, and then lost them as it grew up, keeping small patches in areas such as the head, possibly along the back, with the feathers taking a more filament form. So there you have it. The T-Rex wasn't completely covered in feathers and merely had patches on its head and back. One could argue that it didn't have feathers since the skin imprints don't show feathers, though we believe that there's far too much evidence to point towards it having some form of feathers. One thing's for certain, we can all throw out those artist recreations of T-Rexes looking like parakeets. But if you disagree, be sure to let us know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more dinosaur videos, give it a thumbs up and maybe we'll make some more. Don't forget to subscribe to become a resident of Dangerville today. I wouldn't have been able to make today's video if it wasn't for Squarespace, who reached out to us and gave us the opportunity to tell you about this beautiful online platform that lets you create your very own website. Making your own website has never been easier. With tons of templates to choose from, you're allowed to personalize your page to really represent you or your company. Just see how quick and easy it is to set up your own homepage. And you can even purchase the domain directly from Squarespace, which makes it significantly easier. For 10% off your first purchase and a free trial, just type in squarespace.com forward slash Dangerville. I've been Alistair.
and we'll see you in the next one. <laughs>